So here recently, hashtag weird or hashtag weird AF has been going around to describe Republicans and how they are quite weird. And that word is definitely triggering many people. Well, now Trump is using the word freakish. It says Trump calls walls freakish, stepping up attacks on the dim ticket. Former President Donald Trump ripped into Tim Walz as freakish and excessively liberal on Friday, using his first rally since the Minnesota governor joined the Democratic ticket to road test a barrage of attacks against him. He, he's very freakish, Trump said during a meandering speech in Montana. If Comrade, so now he's Comrade, if Comrade Walz and Comrade Harris win November, the people cheering will be the pink-haired Marxists, the looters, the perverts, the flag burners, Hamas supporters, drug dealers, um, pew-pew grabbers, and human traffickers. All of that. that. That is what he thinks of the Democrats. <laughs> Trump accused Walls of promoting socialism, of being too liberal on immigration and transgender issues, and letting rioters and looters burn down Minneapolis after the George Floyd unaliving in 2020. He yoked the VP to her new running mate's policies, saying, this is her ideology. That's why she picked him. He warned that Harris and Walls would turn America into a full-blown communist country. And he hit back at Walls' signature characterization of the GOP. We're not weird. We're the opposite of weird. <laughs> They're weird. So I'm rubber, you're glue, whatever bounces off of me sticks to you. <laughs> Audio has been unearthed of Trump actually praising Tim Walls and how he handled the George Floyd protests. Turn the audio up. Here's the video. I know Governor Walz is on the phone and, and we spoke. And uh, I fully agree with the way he handled it the last couple of days. I asked him to do that. And the whole world was laughing. Two days, three days later, I spoke to the governor. The governor, I think on the call, and he, he's an, an excellent guy. You've got a big national guard out there that's ready to come in and fight like hell. I tell you, the best, what they did, in Minneapolis was incredible. They, they went in and dominated. And it happened immediately. Tim is on the phone now, Tim Walls. Again, I was very happy with uh, the last couple of days, Tim. You called up big numbers and the big numbers knocked them out so fast, it was like a bowling pin. Uh, yeah, I, our, our city is, is grieving and in pain. And I would just say, as, as, as far as the, the potential the peaceful protesters are expressing a, an outrage that, that is real. They witnessed eight minutes of a man dying in front of them. Well, at that point in time, I did something unprecedented. I mobilized the entire Minnesota National Guard, and that's what the president was alluding to, with, with the size of the force was capable. But I think, again, Mr. President, uh, I don't, if you asked on explaining this, I would just say um, it's going to be very difficult. There are bad actors in this, but there is such a legitimate anger. Our real dilemma here is, is the transition back is to the catalyst that sparked this across the country, and that was what happened with the Minneapolis Police Department. So what we did is a lot of this, what you saw yesterday, was engaging civic leaders and, and the peaceful protest. And I, I would just close with, um, I think the guidance is you got to get a handle on it with that force. That, that is absolutely correct. And then the transition in the next phase is trying to get those spaces for the peaceful protest. And, and I'm happy to do things that we have to look at of, of how do we get reforms. Republicans are attacking Tim Walz's response to the unrest in Minneapolis in 2020, but at the time, then-President Donald Trump said he fully agreed with how the Minnesota governor handled rioting in the aftermath of George Floyd's unaliving, undercutting a key line of GOP attack this week after Walz was named VP um, for Kamala Harris's running mate. So we just heard that um, Trump was under was attacking how he handled it, but Let's hear the audio of how he was praising him back in 2020. All right, back to this article. Trump also continued to smear Harris, who was out fundraising him and is rising in recent polls. The former president, who frequently mispronounces Harris's first name, said he doesn't care if I get it right and nobody really knows her last name. He called her dumb for not yet doing a sit-down interview since ascending to the top of the ticket. Harris has said she would um, like to do so by the end of the month. And he played a, um, played a video featuring clips 
of Harris from her last presidential campaign, saying that um, she supported pew pew buybacks and banning fracking, a position she has now moved away from in an attempt to portray her as dangerously liberal. If she wins in November, Trump said, we're not going to have a country anymore. So he is being very hyperbolic. Trump's remarks came hours after Harris and Walsh appeared at a rally in Arizona where the vice president spoke on immigration, a major issue in the campaign. At that event, Harris pledged to fight for strong border security and blamed Trump for the failure of a bipartisan border deal in Congress earlier this year. There was a bipartisan effort to fix the migrant crisis, but Trump did not want that to happen. He told the Republicans to blow up that that deal, the law that was being passed, the bill that was being passed and had both Republicans and Democrats working on it. And we do understand that he was not in politics, but the fealty to Trump is definitely strong. He's still the leader of the Republican Party right now, pulling the strings of these people, making people kiss the ring. All right. Um, He talks a big game about border security, but does not walk the walk, she said. Trump, in turn, accused Harris of allowing an invasion at the southern border. The former president traveled to Montana, a safely red state he won by 16 percentage points in 2020 to promote Republican U.S. Senate candidate Tim Sheehy in his bid to unseat Senator John Tester, one of the chamber's most vulnerable Democrats. It's a bit of unfinished business for Trump, who campaigned for um, Tester's last Republican opponent after the senator opposed, uh, um, opposed his pick to run the Department of Veterans Affairs. He's terrible. He's terrible. Trump said of Tester on Friday, later insulting his weight. What? (laughs) Trump with his big old badonkadonk. All right. Trump was forced to take a detour on his way to Bozeman when his plane was diverted to billing because of a mechanical issue. Trump's plane landed safely and he continued on to Bozeman on a different aircraft. He is also fundraising in Wyoming and Colorado during his Rocky Mountain swing. Now to this post. This woman made this post. The problem Black people are having with Kamala is not the fact that she's claiming to be a Black woman, and she's not. It's that her politics don't reflect those of a Black woman. She has no respect or love for Black people. If she did, she would have never said this. And then this woman went on to post a clip that was a five-second clip that was repeated twice. And you could tell that it was doctored, but I couldn't quite put my finger on it. But thankfully, someone posted the full clip for context. But here first, watch this clip. So I'm not gonna sit here and say, I'm gonna do something that's only gonna benefit black people. No. So I'm not gonna sit here and say, I'm gonna do something that's only gonna benefit black people. No. Because she posted that doctored clip, this person, old Atlanta, posted the full context of what she was saying. And it definitely clarifies what she meant. So go ahead and watch the full clip. But no, if you look at the the reality of who will benefit from certain policies, when you take into account that they're not starting at the the same place and they're they're not starting on equal footing, it will directly benefit black children, black families, black homeowners, because the disparities are so significant. So if we focus on the specific issues that have resulted in the greatest disparities, and we understand that that's part of why we're doing it. Listen, the the reality also is this. Any policy that will benefit black people will benefit all of society. Let's be clear about that. Let's really be clear about that. So I'm not going to sit here and say, I'm going to do something that's only going to benefit black people. No, because whatever benefits that black family will benefit that community and society as a whole and the country, right? People can vote how they want to, but the posting of Dr. Clips is um, disingenuous. It's lying. It's flat out being dishonest, but that is politics as usual. It's typical. I am thankful, though, that other people can pull receipts and that we can see things in the full context. Folks can vote how they want to, totally vote how you want to, but you ain't got to lie, Craig. You ain't got to lie. Go ahead, join the conversation. Let me know what you think about this. Don't forget to like, comment, and share.